No, it's fine. Uh, just a moment. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, fine. Uh, can you see this? Yes. The screen. Okay, I start. Uh, just a moment. Uh, oops. Uh, um, so I have, I suppose, 40 minutes to, to talk. So this is, uh, uh, so I'd like to report about our work on, on the construction of uh, uh, black holes in electric, with electric hair. What is done in collaboration with, with my student, uh, Roman Jarval in Tours in France. <clears throat> and uh, before, before I start, let me remind you the, the story a little bit. The story was that in uh, 1969, Ruffini and Wheeler uh, formulated so-called no hair conjecture, according to which uh, all black holes which exist in the universe should be uniquely characterized by their mass, angular momentum, and, and electric charge. So here is their logic. They said that uh, black holes are uh, formed uh, in the gravitational collapse which is the uh, so violent uh, process that it breaks everything. Uh, so all information falling into a black hole, into a collapsing body, is lost. So you you can make a black hole out out of uh, anything you like, out of, of of bricks, out of water, out of elephants, or out of of TV sets, and uh, uh, of, of out of gold or out of stone. And the result will be exactly the same. <clears throat> All information is completely lost in the black hole. And everything is forgotten by black hole, apart from uh, three things. So the black hole remembers only the uh, value of the mass, because mass cannot be cannot disappear, uh, the, the, the total electric charge and the angular momentum. And all the rest is 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 forgotten. And therefore, Ruffini and Miller argued, uh, all black holes uh, should be uh, should be described by Kerr Newman metrics, because uh, Kerr Newman metrics are precisely characterized by three parameters: by uh, by uh, mass, angular momentum, and electric charge. Of course, uh, at the time it was only a, a conjecture, and then without any proof, it was only a, a sort of possibility argument. But then, so, some few years later, uh, people started uh, testing this conjecture, and uh, the conjecture was uh, confirmed in a series of so-called Noah hair theorems. In these theorems, uh, what people did, they they would take Einstein equations and would uh, write in the right-hand side a source associated to some physical uh, field uh, different from electromagnetic field. For example, uh, one can uh, check if a black hole can uh, support a scalar charge. So one has therefore a scalar field as a source, and one tries to analyze the, uh, the, the, the resulting equations. And each time, one finds either no black holes, no black holes at all. Or in other words, all solutions are obtained in this way are singular, are singular at the horizon. Or one finds known solutions, uh, solutions uh, of Kern-Newman family, nothing else. This procedure was uh, was uh, was repeated for uh, in number of in a number of cases for for massive scalar spinner vector fields and uh, all the scalar fields with uh, various interactions and so on. So these are rigorous no hair theorems, and uh, so this uh, continue continued like that for for about twenty years, and then but then a first counterexample manifest. For example, to 
uh, the conjecture was found, uh, and and it was done by uh, in our paper with Dmitry Galsov. It was more than thirty years ago, and what we managed to do it was 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 to construct uh, black holes coupled to a non-abelian gauge field, black holes with young nose hair. So these solutions. They are static, spherically symmetric, and asymptotically uh, flat. They carry uh, a mass, non-zero mass, but there is no uh, charge uh, corresponding to the young nose field because the field decays at, at infinity faster than Columbian field. And therefore, the charge is zero. And nevertheless, the metric is not structured. It's different. So this was the first uh, counterexample. And then, this uh, produced a lot of excitement at the time in, in the community. And then the people immediately started uh, trying to find other, uh, other solutions. And many, many other examples were found. So first, uh, these were generalizations of uh, these non-abelian black holes, uh, generalizations for higher gauge group, uh, uh, in generalizations including additional fields, like Higgs field, Dilaton field, uh, Skern field, uh, non spherically symmetric solutions, and so on and so so forth. Later, after uh, uh, after the year uh, two thousand, uh, the interest shifted a little bit. And people started uh, producing black holes uh, with a with a simple uh, scalar fields, uh, scalar hair, in particular. Um, uh, they managed to construct hairy black holes uh, with the uh, simple complex scalar field uh, by assuming that the solutions are not uh, not 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 uh, static stationary solutions. They they managed to define stationary solutions. This is a famous solution of Kaderi and Radu. Then later they produced uh, black holes in Holdensky theory, in metric affine theories, uh, donkey in um, in higher dimensions, uh, black holes with, uh, with with massive gravitons, and uh, many 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 other examples. So nowadays there is a whole zoo of hairy black holes, and it's difficult uh, to to classify them. So at some point uh, ago, so, so some some twenty years ago, we were able to to find uh, to write this this physics reports. It was just in the beginning, but nowadays it would be very difficult to 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 sort of somehow describe everything. Uh, so so there are many uh, Harry black holes uh, in the market. However, one can ask the following uh, question. Uh, which of these solutions are physical? Uh, which which of them can uh, can have physical interest? And then the answer is that uh, probably none of them, not many or none of them, because all these solutions were obtained uh, in in the context of uh, simplified physical models, whose uh, physical relevance is questionable. They they are very nice. But, for example, take, for example, solutions with the uh, Hardensky fields. Hardensky theory is very nice. We all like the Hardensky theory, but who is in the uh, Hardensky scale? No one. Yeah. Well, of course, one can study uh, black hole solutions. One can do. But uh, their physical relevance is, is not at all clear. And, and uh, so one can study solutions with uh, black holes in massive gravity. This is also very interesting. I've done this myself. But who has seen uh, massive gravitons? Nobody. Uh, maybe there are massive gravitons, but uh, this is this is not well, this is open question. Maybe there are no. Now the next question: what would be physical solutions, physical black holes? And then the answer is clear. These are, uh, would be solutions obtained here in the context of a physical theory. And the physical theory uh, is, is clearly Einstein gravity coupled to the standard model of fundamental interactions. Uh, and this too clearly exists. 
So uh, there is absolutely no doubt so that there is Einstein gravity, and then there is a, that there is a standard model, and the, bo both of them uh, have been verified with a very high precision. Now, and therefore, one, one should just take this, uh, these two, uh, combine them together, and study black holes. Now, standard model contains the QCD sector. And QCD, uh, well, one can study QCD solutions, but it, there is not, not, not much sense in it because, uh, sorry, because, uh, because of strong coupling. Um, so there is a strong coupling, and uh, therefore, even these are our solutions, original solutions, they are, they are nice, but it's not, not very clear. So uh, if it makes any sense to study classical solutions with classical pure young Mills field, um, uh, it, it, it could be a, a part of QCD, but what they describe, it's not at all clear. Yeah. Therefore, let's forget about uh, QCD sector and what it means. Uh, there remains the electronic sector. In other words, uh, one should uh, take uh, electronic theory coupled to, to Einstein gravity, and this, this, this gives Einstein van der Salam. This theory contains uh, Einstein Maxwell, and of course it describes all known black holes. It describes Kernion black holes, but maybe, maybe it describes something else. Uh, is it possible that, 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 that there could be some other black holes? And of course, th this question uh, has been addressed. People tried to uh, study uh, uh, hairy black holes in this context, but, this has always been done, uh, not within a complete uh, electronic Lagrangian, but people only took uh, uh, pieces of this Lagrangian, and this was done for a very good reason. Because if you take the complete Lagrangian, you lose spherical symmetry. And, and this, is, this is the reason. Without spherical symmetry, it's difficult to, difficult to proceed. Uh, of course, people like to, spherical asymmetric solutions, first of all. Now, and uh, so this was a situation uh, when we sort of started thinking of it. And uh, three years ago, there was a paper of Maldacena who explained clearly why, who, uh, who, uh, who, who, who didn't uh, start, didn't find any, any solutions. He discussed uh, purely qualitatively uh, magnetically charged black holes, magnetically charged uh, with electronic hair. And he said that uh, solutions cannot be spherically symmetric uh, for a very simple reason. Because a spherically symmetric uh, magnetic field is homogeneous on a sphere. But it is known that in a theory of spontaneous symmetry breaking, a homogeneous uh, magnetic field is unstable with respect to fragmentation into vortices. So this is a Meissner effect, if you like. And therefore, Maldacena said uh, that a black hole uh, should be something like that, uh, a horizon, then there is a, a region, a false vacuum region, and then uh, a region of which he called uh, corona, and this is the, the region made of, of, of radial pieces of vortices. And so this, is, uh, this should be a black hole in, uh, uh, in um, einstein weimar salam theory. So this was his uh, suggestion, uh, but he didn't solve anything. And, uh, and then he explicitly stated that the solution, solution should be very difficult to obtain. And so this was our starting point. Of, of our analysis. And then first, we, uh, by looking at this picture, we realized that essentially the, uh, the gravity in this case is not, is not really important because uh, the same structure should exist uh, even, even if you remove gravity, even in flat space, because in flat space, the same argument goes through that the, the, the radial magnetic field should be unstable due to uh, condensation. And then therefore, our first question was, what is known about uh, magnetic monopoles in uh, flat space, uh, 
in the electric theory. Let me first uh, remind you basic facts about magnetic monopoles in general, uh, also in quad space. Uh, the best known monopole solution is the monopole of Dirac. This is the radial magnetic field, and therefore its divergence is not zero, but nevertheless, one can introduce a vector potential, uh, uh, or uh, more precisely, a pair of vector potentials uh, because uh, the potential in this case should be uh, should be uh, singular somewhere, uh, but you can uh, cover the the space by by two regions, and uh, one can uh, use uh, two locally regular gauges and uh, it, uh, two coordinate patches where the the field will be regular, and then the uh, correspondence between Two gauges in the transition transition region gives so-called direct quantization condition, which says that the magnetic charge P should be multiple uh, m times uh, divided by two e, where e is is, is uh, electron charge. Yeah, and and so I will call m uh, magnetic charge in, in, in the following. So one can also understand direct direct monopole as a solenoid. Uh, which terminates somewhere and so the, the, the magnetic uh, lines uh, go away in the form of magnetic monopole. And this uh, and if the Dirac quantization is uh, is uh, fulfilled, then this solenoid is not observable. This is our Aron of bomb effect, if you like. So and then you can move this solenoid by gauge transformations. And then you can use two locally regular gauges, and this is uh, and, and this gives uh, this uh, this is the direct monopole. Now uh, the next step was well, well was done by if you wish by Troft and Polikov, and who who discovered that if the theory is embedded into into non abelian uh, if the monopole is embedded into non abelian theory in the SU two theory and. Uh, which contains, in addition, uh, the triplet uh, Higgs field, then you can completely globally remove the, uh, the the Dirac string. So this singularity, by the way, is called Dirac string. Yeah. And in addition, you you can make a solution uh, globally regular uh, to have a finite energy. And so this is a Hoff Polikov monopole, which is enormously uh, popular theoretically. Uh, but the problem is that uh, nobody has seen it uh, simply because it doesn't belong to standard model. Uh, because in standard model, Higgs field is doublet, is 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 uh, under, is in in fundamental representation and not in the joint. So it's it's, it's it's a different theory. Now, what is called uh, what is known about uh, monopoles in uh, electric theory? Well, in fact, not much. Uh, people usually don't like it for the following reason. So so. Let's take first electric theory. So, so this is electric theory. Uh, everything is is uh, mm, is made dimensionless. There is a SU two field, a U one field. There is a Higgs field, and everything is 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 written here. And uh, then this theory contains Maxwell electrodynamics as a particular case. Um, and therefore, one can embed a Dirac monopole into it, and it becomes a theory. A, 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 Solution of electric theory. Uh, the problem is that it, it has singular energy, uh, infinite energy. It's singular because because of a point like uh, Columbian singularity, and people don't like it. They say, "Oh, well, this is not good. It's a singular solution." And then, um, it, if it was regular, it would be better. But it's singular. Um, other thing, Dirac monopole is stable within the Maxwell theory, but it should be unstable within electric theory, simply because the magnetic field here uh, becomes unbounded uh, close to i equals to zero, and this should provoke instability of electric vacuum. This is this is well known effect of electric condensation, but nobody has studied uh, has studied uh, before before us. Next, uh, there is a, uh, a solution, so-called Chermaison monopole. This is a, a kind of a nonlinear superposition of a uh, uh, direct monopole with n equals two, with a non-abelian monopole. And uh, the solution is still singular. The energy is still uh, is still uh, infinite. However, 
uh, nice thing is that this magnetic charge now splits into two parts. So there is a point-like uh, part at the origin and the uh, sort of uh, smoothly distributed in, in space uh, part. And then the energy also splits in, into a point-like uh, contribution, which is, in, uh, which is infinite and uh, uh, a sort of distributed in space uh, um, part, uh, smooth. Now there is also no number monopole, but number monopole is not is not. Uh, it's, it's some people like it, but it's not good for our purposes purposes because it's not static. So this is the monopole attached to a real vortex, not 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 to a sort of some gauge uh, artifact, but real vortex. And so this is not good for us. Therefore, uh, the summary. Uh, so we understood that uh, in the electric theory, there are two types of, of monopoles. So it's a point-like Dirac monopole and uh, a sort of distributed extended Chermizon monopole. And next, uh, as a one up exercise, we, we, we studied their stability. And then to study stability of these solutions, we considered uh, general perturbations of the wagon, completely general, separated variables, uh, fixed the, the gauge, and then everything boils down to, to a multi-channel Schrodinger problem, spectral problem. And then uh, if this problem uh, admits, neg admits negative modes, uh, which means bound states with, 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 with the negative or omega squared, then the solution is unstable. And then we were able to show that uh, the non-abelian solution of churn Maison is stable. So, so, so by applying so-called uh, Jacobi criterion and uh, by computing Jacobi determinant, we found that the solution is, is completely stable with respect to any small, all small perturbations. This is already something, uh, but for the Dirac monopole, the result was different. We found that all Dirac monopoles, if, if, uh, apart from the fundamental one with M equals one, all of them, uh, show instabilities. And uh, the instability exists only in for the particular value of the orbital angular momentum, which is determined by the total magnetic charge. And in particular, uh, even n equals two Dirac monopole is unstable. And uh, the first thing, uh, one could think that it's unstable with respect to splitting. But no, it is unstable uh, in the spherically symmetric sector. So therefore, it doesn't split. It uh, instability grows uh, leads to a condensation of uh, of a part of our energy to a non-abelian state, and this non-abelian state uh, can only be a Chermizon monopole, which is, which is also spherically symmetric and which is stable. Therefore, we realize that Chermizon is a is a could be viewed as a collapse of Dirac. But this is only for n equals two and for, 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 for n equals three, four and so on. The, uh, the, the Dirac should also collapse and it should lead to, to, the, to the appearance of a non-spherically symmetric uh, uh, stable structures. And these are, these are non-abelian multi-monopoles and, and so therefore, our first, uh, in our first uh, paper, we conjectured that, 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 that such solutions should exist in the electric theory. It was only a conjecture. Then in our second paper, we uh, constructed these solutions explicitly uh, by assuming axial symmetry. So spherical symmetry doesn't work, but it, it, it turns out that axial symmetry works for any number, for any value of the uh, magnetic charge. And then we took uh, the so-called axial angles of Arabian Rossi, which le uh, leads to the system of, of, of seven coupled uh, PDEs. We solved these equations with, with corresponding boundary conditions. And then, uh, and then here are the results. We obtained the solution, monopole solutions with higher magnetic charge, which are not at all spherically symmetric. They have some complicated structure of the energy density. And then they, uh, it's interesting that their magnetic charge splits into two parts. One, one, one is point-like, which is, which is located at the origin, 
And another one, the second part is, is sort of smoothly distributed in, into this tube. It's a, a, a kind of toroidal distribution of, of magnetic charge. And this torus is, is sandwiched be, 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 between two uh, electric currents. One, one, one is in the positive direction and another one in, in the negative direction. Then we discovered that when we increase the, the value of magnetic charge, uh, the monopole starts to uh, starts developing a sort of a vacuum bubble in the center. This is the region where the Higgs field uh, is very small and therefore the symmetry is restored. And here is the picture of a, of a non-abelian electric monopole with high, with, with high, with large magnet, magnetic charge. It, it contains a small, a, a point like uh, U1 hypermagnetic charge in the center. Then there is a vacuum bubble. And then the, there are these rings uh, containing, uh, containing the, uh, uh, the, the non-abelian contribution to the magnetic, magnetic charge and then the currents. So this, this the sandwiches. And then the next question was, was, can we generalize this to replace this the central point by a small black hole? Because the, the energy of this is still singular because, because it is of point-like singularity. But now if we put a small uh, horizon over there, then it provides a cutoff. So the energy becomes regular. And so this is still preparation. Um, so we went to, so, 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 so here is the, the so we took on Weinberg Salam and added, added the Einstein term, Einstein Hilbert term. And then this gives a couple of equations. So equations, there are electricity equations and Einstein equations, and everything is dimensionless. And in this units, the, there is dimensionless coupling, kappa, which is the ratio, which, which, is, which is this one. Uh, which is extremely small, very, very small. Therefore, the, the, the back reaction is, is, is very small unless, unless for very large magnetic charges. And these equations admit uh, the simplest solutions, which is magnetically charged Reissner North Star. So this is not, not, not astonishing. This is okay. This is, this is good. But now the point is, is that in the Einstein Maxwell theory, Reissner North Star is stable. Whereas in this theory, it is unstable. And it, it turns out that it is, uh, uh, so it is unstable if it's small, if it's, if its size is, is, is sufficiently small. Whereas when it's large, it is stable. And therefore the solution, so suppose that we fix the magnetic charge and start decreasing the value of the event horizon. And starting from some critical, uh, critical value of, of the event horizon size, uh, instability appears first as a, in the form of a zero mode. Uh, so here is the corresponding equation. And this zero mode, which, which, which just appears, uh, provides the perturbative indication of the existence of a new branch of solutions, which are hairy black holes. Hairy black holes, which bifurcate with, uh, with the riser and so. The corresponding zero mode describes uh, the W current, which is tangential to the horizon. And this current produces uh, pieces of, uh, of magnetic and Z fluxes orthogonal to the horizon. In, in, in other words, vortex pieces. And this is precisely the corona of Moldoceno, but at the perturbative level. Uh, but the idea is this. And then, the next question is, can we generalize this? Uh, can we produce this uh, non perturbatively And yes, and, and we did. Uh, again, again, uh, in the axial asymmetric sector, we, 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 we choose the metric, the, the, the static axial asymmetric in, in this way. This is the, the electric fields. And then, and, uh, and, and here is the moral, uh, the, the result. When black hole is large, uh, when it just, Bifurcates with Reiser and Rossum, it starts growing hair. So there is a small, just small, small hair. Then when we, uh, so the magnetic charge is fixed, we reduce the size of the, of the black hole. We decrease the, the horizon size. And then the black hole decreases, but the hair uh, grows uh, more and more. So, so, so it's a huge hair. And then 
starting from a certain critical value, uh, the, the, the the hair stops growing because the the energy in the central region, uh, the, the field becomes in, in the central region so, so, so large that it, 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 it creates a vacuum bubble. So therefore we get uh, a, a very small, a tiny black hole in the center uh, surrounded by a, a bubble of, of, of a symmetric phase. And then the metric is, is he, he is very close to, to a raster Nordstrom deceptor. Now here is the energy, uh, mass uh, energy. And uh, okay, then we continue uh, decreasing the, uh, the, the size and, and then the, the, the horizon size can decrease to extreme limit. So in the limit, uh, the, the center black hole becomes very, very small and becomes extreme. So extreme, which means that uh, surface gravity vanishes Hawking temperature vanishes. Uh, and uh, so this black hole uh, looks like that. The structure is more, more or less. Uh, so it, it shows two, two completely different scales. Uh, so this is the uh, region where, near horizon region, where geometry is, 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 strongly, is, is, is strongly deviates from the flat, is, 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 is of the size of a. 10 to the minus 12 in the in the electric units. Whereas the hair, the region where all these non-abelian structures are located is, is of the order of one. So this is, and therefore there are 12 orders of magnitude in between. So this is the size of vacuum bubble where nothing happens, where, where the Higgs is zero and uh, all fields are zero, uh, apart from a uh, hyper, hyper magnetic uh, field. Therefore, we get in uh, we get something like a flat space the same as flat space electric monopole, which is located uh, over here, and it doesn't know about the tiny black holes in, in the center. It doesn't feel it. So we get exactly flat space solutions where the central uh, Coulombian singularity is replaced by a tiny uh, riser nostrum the center black hole. Um, okay, and so this is the structure of of uh, of, of, of this extreme solution. So, so in, in, in the central bubble, there is only, only, only U1 uh, hypermagnetic field. Then there is a bubble wall where which, can, which, which contains a condensate, uh, W condensate, and, a, and then in the faraway region, there is only fields of Dirac magnetic monopole. And here is the picture. So we get, uh, again, so we have the, the, the central, uh, uh, Rice and Nostrum uh, the sitter black hole and uh, containing containing the, the U1 magnetic hypercharge. Then there is a vacuum bubble and uh, dominated by, by this field. And then the, uh, there is a w, w and Higgs condensates in the form of rings. And these rings contain uh, magnetic charge and electric currents. And finally, far away, uh, there is only radial magnetic field, N nothing else. So, 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 so the, 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 the metric is flat, geometry is flat, far away, and then only. And then the, the last question was, uh, uh, how, uh, how large can be the, the magnetic charge? And it, it turns out that there is an upper bound. And uh, this is upper bound for, for the magnetic charge is one over kappa, and kappa is, is uh, this dimensionless parameter coupling which which which, which appears in, in the equations. And if the black hole reaches this um, this uh, value of magnetic uh, size uh, of magnetic charge, then its size becomes of the order of one centimeter, and its mass of the order of of the mass of our planet. So this is a planetary mass black hole. And this is very interesting because because in, in almost all other scenarios of of, uh, of uh, hairy black holes, black holes are microscopically small. Hairy black holes are mi microscopically small. And now, now here is my conclusion. So we we, are, we, we constructed for the first time solutions uh, describing uh, black holes with electric uh, hair, which might perhaps be astrophysically relevant. But this is uh, at the moment I, I cannot really say much uh, about this. And so, and so that's it. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Mikhail. Mm -hmm. No. Who have questions? Yeah. 
Thank you very much uh, for a very interesting talk. But uh, I would like to ask you uh, about astronomical application of this kind of objects, uh, especially about the sitter, Reisner, Nordstrom, the sitter, because it's not asymptotically flat. How to use it in, uh, let, let us say, for real astronomical objects? No, it, it, it has not, nothing to do with real, real cosmological constant because the sitter arises because in the vacuum bubble, X field is zero. And therefore, there is an energy, vacuum energy density, uh, associated with the, with the Higgs field, only because of this. But it has nothing to do whatsoever with the, with the, with the real lambda term, which which with the dark energy, not at all. No. So again, to so I cannot I cannot at the moment say much about uh, about uh, astronomical and astrophysical and cosmological applications of these solutions. I can only say that these are solutions obtained in a realistic physical theory. So this is the, the first example, if you if you wish. And uh, in order to be astrophysically interesting, uh, in my opinion, one has first of uh, first of all one has to compensate their magnetic charge. And therefore, I think that they should be they should be forming pairs, which is basically is 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 quite natural in the. So if there are fluctuations in the in the primordial electric plasma, and then there should be just by 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 by, by Kibble effect, uh, there should be a spontaneous uh, production of uh, of zones with a positive and negative magnetic charge, and therefore these black holes presumably they they form somehow in pairs, and then they attract each other, and then I think they 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 do not necessarily annihilate. Because uh, uh, there is a there is an electromagnetic attraction, but there is also a repulsion due to due to opposite phases of the Higgs field. So uh, therefore, they, they they presumably repel also each other. But again, this is the question of a higher level of complexity. At the moment, at the moment, even even construct the solutions is, is extreme is tremendously difficult. Difficult. One has to solve system of tip, of ten couple. PDEs with the boundary conditions, and already to compute their quadrupole moment, for example, is not at all a simple, a simple task. And uh, and there are many, many technical problems. But but again, these are the first area solutions in a realistic physical theory. This is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. No. Yes. Um, yes. Th thank you for this presentation. Um, I have a couple of questions. Prior to your work, did when people used to say a black hole has no hair, it can only be mass, charge, and angular momentum, they they were never considering magnetic charge. Is is that correct? They were just no, assuming no, that. No, 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 no. They, they, they also because Rice and Nostrum can be electrically or magnetically charged. This is this is the same. Uh, of course, magnetic charge is not very popular, but why not? Oh, uh, I, I so, get so, yeah. so yeah. even if we don't go, even if we don't go to non-abelian, the statement that should be in the literature is black holes don't have mass, angular momentum, electric uh, have mass, electric, angular momentum, electric charge, and magnetic charge are the yeah. are the that, will, that, yes. That, yes. that should yes. have been the statement from the beginning. Right, right, and then you can find it in some versions of it the, because there were some okay. ramific ramifications of this no hair conjecture and then different formulations. And then if if you want to read literature, one finds this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. that, thank you. Now my question is this: If I write down Einstein gravity coupled to Weinberg Salam, the theory is Lorentz invariant, sort of general coordinate invariant. Yes. So, looking for solutions which are not spherically symmetric have i not broken lorentz invariant spontaneously no no, no wait uh, uh what do you mean by lorentz invariant so the, they are they are uh, uh, they are differing variant and when we simply looking for solutions we with a, a, a certain number of isometries so we we, we require the existence of two killing vectors one is temporal translations, and then the other one is axial rotations, and then we require them to be uh, the, the 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 
the uh, time lag uh, killing vector to be hypersurface orthogonal, which means the solution is static and not stationary. So therefore, no rotation. And yes. this is this is this is a mathematical context, if you like. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm I'm happy with I'm happy with that. What it seems I, I thought if I write down a theory which has a symmetry, and I have a solution which doesn't have the symmetry, then the symmetry was spontaneously broken. No, no, but what do you mean by symmetry? Uh, well, this, uh, the standard Weinberg Salam theory is, is is Lorentz invariant, so it, it has rotational symmetry in, in, in flat space. In flat space, yes. Uh, oh well, uh, I mean, uh, couple it to Einstein gravity. Einstein gravity is also Lorentz invariant. It's even I mean, it's general coordinate invariant. Right. Yes, and uh, and then uh, I don't see the point. So could you? So could you please, it yeah. seems that it seems that you're <laughs> somehow you. I, I don't quite understand how you can finish up with with asymmetric solutions. Um, I, I know how to do it dynamically. I just don't understand how to do it with fundamental Higgs fields. If the Higgs field to make ah. assessment of an operator right. in a coherent state, then then everything follows. But if it's a fundamental if it's a fundamental field. Then I don't see how you can do this without without violate without spontaneously breaking Lorentz invariance. That that that's my that's my concern. No no no, but look, uh, Lorentz invariance is a is a is a symmetry of a theorem, not of a solution. So if you take uh, electric charge, it's not Lorentz invariant configuration. It's it's a, it, it is, it's a, it's a spherically symmetric field. Yes. It doesn't respect Lorentz invariance. Even though the uh, underlying Maxwell theory is, of course, Lorentz invariant, but this is invariance of a theory and not of the solution. So, if you will, this is spontaneous symmetry break. Yes, yes, if, if you like it. But but this is a trivial statement that electric charge breaks uh, Lorentz invariant. Fine, and so on, and so forth. Uh, this uh, I don't see. Uh, I don't see any any problem with this. No, I, I look for, for electric charge. You, you you've just taken a vector potential and said a zero is e over exactly. r. But and this you, is but and you this can is definitely percent. transform it to a different Lorentz frame. No, but look. So if you uh, if if you take electric charge, it's already a, a configuration which changes uh, uh, under Lorentz transformation. So it's, so yeah. boosted boosted electric charge is a different thing. Yes, of and, course. Uh, and then any 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 black hole, a black hole also breaks uh, Lorentz invariance, even though it's uh, but, but but it breaks. It's a black hole is fixed somewhere, and then it, it doesn't move unless you move it, and then the Lorentz invariance is broken. And so so I I, I don't see the point. Yeah, well, it, it's it's. I mean, the point is, it's broken without a goal, yes. without a vector goal. So, that that's all I'm asking. The question is scheduled for the later time. Okay. We Thank you. have time only for short questions. <laughs> so <laughs> so you can, you, 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 you can continue uh, a bit later. <laughs>